Welcome to the Weekly Roar, coming live from the Lion's Den, helping new managers become great leaders and awesome bosses. And now, here's your host, Greg Storch. Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Weekly Roar. As you see, I am on the rooftop of my hotel in Rome. And right behind me is St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. Thanks for joining me live from Rome, Italy. Yesterday I had a speaking engagement here with the USO. And um, today it's time that we do a little live action here. Um, so anyway, today I'm talking about the masks that we wear, imposter syndrome. But first, hello and happy hump day, everybody. I'm Greg Storch. I'm the founder of Lion Enterprise, a leadership development and coaching business. I'm a certified speaker, coach, and trainer with the John Maxwell team and a certified professional coach. You can catch all of my previous Weekly Roar videos on my website. Just go to the homepage there and at the top is the link to the Lion's Pride Library. You can access all of my videos 24-7. At whenever you want to go grab one of the videos I've got tons of topics there almost 30 videos now so go catch them there um, my websites www.lion-enterprise.com all right so thanks for joining me guys today so what do you say we go ahead and jump into this whole mask thing that I'm talking about today what do you guys say you guys probably know already that I volunteered to help the USO set up a huge haunted house for Halloween this year. One of the things we had to do was we had to purchase extra costumes for the volunteer actors. We bought tons and tons of masks. So while I was getting them all staged in the dressing rooms, I kind of slipped into this thought about how interesting it is when we put our masks on as soon as it's on, we become these different characters or these different people. So a few days after we wrapped up the haunted house, um, Sam and I, my wife and I were on the post, the army post shopping and there was a vendor from Venice set up selling hand painted carnivale masks. They are gorgeous and we ended up buying two of them and brought them back to decorate our apartment. So over the past week, my, um, my life has been <laughs> confronted with masks. <laughs> so, you know, the history of donning masks actually goes back thousands of years to, and it's, it's actually attributed to the, um, Celts. The, the Celtic people thousands of years ago celebrated, well, not Halloween as we know it, but they would don masks on All Hallows Eve, and they thought that it would protect them from evil spirits. So we've kind of getting pre gotten pretty far away from that kind of a practice today. However, <laughs> we still have the practice of donning masks, right? So all this focus on masks just got me thinking <laughs> about a lot of us tend to hide behind masks and they're not physical masks obviously I'm talking about emotional masks and we do it out of fear maybe we're unsure or we're insecure about the things so we let our behaviors mask <laughs> the things that we don't want the world to find out about us. So the problem is not being who you truly are, hiding behind a mask so the world doesn't find you out. That's called imposter syndrome. Yeah, imposter syndrome is actually a thing. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. Imposter syndrome is a fear-based reaction to something. Maybe we don't believe we're worthy of our success. So we tell ourselves, we don't deserve this. And we, we don't believe that it can be true, that we can be successful. And we don't want others to potentially find out that we aren't really 
what we say we are. That's the fear we use. That's the fear that the masks are hiding for us. Imposter syndrome will make you feel like a fake or a phony in your own life or that you just don't really belong in the place where you currently find yourself at. So it does make you look like a fake when you are have imposter syndrome, but it really reflects a belief that you're inadequate. That's why people do it. Despite evidence of the contrary. And that's really what fear is all about, right? False evidence appearing real. Imposter syndrome is a struggle with your confidence, a belief. It's the message you tell yourself that comes from a place of self-doubt. So I, I told you um, just as Nina was joining us that there's actually studies that suggest up to 70% of people experience imposter syndrome at some point in their career. So chances are good that this might be resonating with a lot of you. Maybe you don't feel worthy of the success you've achieved, or you chalk up that success to one of the three C's, chance, charm, or connections, that your success came by hap happenstance. It was just chance or it was because of your charm and your wit, <laughs> or it came from the connections you have, the people you know. Damn, what a shame. That's a real shame, so unfair to yourself to think that way, isn't it? A lot of high achievers actually go through this imposter syndrome. It's their dirty little secret. Deep down inside, they feel like frauds in their own lives. And depending on the role they play, this imposter syndrome can come in different forms. So I wanted to talk about a few of those today. So if you're thinking you might have one of these masks <laughs> that you put on, if you feel like you may have experienced imposter syndrome, do you think you might be an imposter? Are you struggling with your confidence? Maybe you're wearing these masks. Let me talk to you about a few of the personality types that may help you find out which imposter you are and some ways that you can begin to remove that mask. And the famous John Maxwell saying is, you're the most important person you'll talk to, so be careful what you say to yourself. Um, at the end of the day, this is about finding those bad habits, right? that might be holding you back from reaching your full potential. That's what this is about. So see if any of these resonate with you, okay? Has anyone ever called you a perfectionist? Maybe a micromanager? Being a perfectionist is almost synonymous with imposter syndrome. Perfectionists tend to set really high elusive goals, almost setting themselves up for failure. And when they don't achieve that goal, there goes the mask, right? We're talking about some of the personality types that tend to suffer from imposter syndrome. And the first one is a perfectionist. Anyway, they set themselves up for failure, these overachievers, because they set these really high goals and then when they don't achieve them, they put on this mask because major self-doubt and worry comes in about how they're measuring up to things. So, to be honest with you guys, sometimes I feel like I fall into this category. I've been called a control freak before, many times. <laughs> I even thought sometimes that if I want something done right, I have to do it myself. These are all signs that this might be an imposter moment for you. So what do you do if you feel like you fall into this group? Because success is rarely satisfying for this type of a person. Because they believe they could have done it better than they did, right? Then trying to get better at owning up to your wins. You, you gotta get better at owning up to your wins and celebrating them. 
Celebrating your wins could help start build your confidence and ultimately help you pull that mask off your face and get away from imposter syndrome. Another thing you can try, Nelly, you, you think you fall into this group. Another thing you can try is try pushing yourself to start on projects before you feel you're ready to get started on them. Why? Because perfectionists struggle with getting things started because things are never going to be perfect. So they'll never want to get started. It's never going to be the right time. It has to be perfect. Listen, there's never going to be a right time. You have to just get started. And that's one of the setbacks to being a perfectionist is you never feel like it's the right time to go. All right, so perfectionist is the first one. <clears throat> Excuse me. My good friend, Eric G. Reed, fellow coach, loves superheroes. Luckily, I don't think he tries to be one himself, maybe except to his children, of course. But this, being the superhero, is another type of person that can contract imposter syndrome. <laughs> See what I did there? Contract syndrome. I say it like it's a disease. <laughs> so, the superheroes, they work harder than anyone else because they never feel like they measure up to their peers. They cover up their insecurities, that little voice telling them you aren't as good as everybody else. You're not as good as Joe Schmo. So they work and they work and they work. So are you the superhero staying late at the office? First in, last out? Do you feel like if you aren't working, then the free time you have is just a waste of time? Do you feel like you should be doing something all the time? you might be the superhero. If you're a workaholic, you might be the victim of the mindset that you need validation from working. Notice I didn't say from the work, you need validation from working. You get validation from the act of working and not doing the work itself, so it's external validation so what you need to work on is validating yourself finding validation internally find a way of patting yourself on the back make yourself feel good about what you've accomplished small or big it doesn't matter developing the ability to validate yourself can build your self-confidence and once you feel like you're truly talented and skilled then you can let off the gas a little bit and you no longer have to feel like you have to be the superhero. I'm sure your friends and family would appreciate that. <laughs> It'd be nice to see you again. All right, I love this next one. I call this personality Mr. or Mrs. Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> These are people who operate at a higher IQ than most people. I refer to them as a genius. The problem is they think that their successes are a product of their abilities instead of their efforts. Think about that. These are the people who believe that if they have to work really hard at something, then they must not be good at it. They are kind of like the perfectionist. They set their internal bars way too high, and when they don't get things right the first time, their inner voice shows up. Now you might be Mr. Einstein, or you might be Mrs. Einstein suffering from imposter syndrome. If you tend to excel at things without much effort, or you were that straight A student in school, when you actually have a setback in life, does your confidence take a hit from the shame of failing? If you're like, oh yeah, that's me right there, then here are some things that you can do to pull off that imposter mask you might be wearing. First of all, try telling yourself that you are a work in progress. Realize that to accomplish big goals, you have to be intentional about your growth. And 
that growth should occur throughout your life, not immediately and perfect all at the same time. Stop avoiding trying things because you have convinced yourself that you're just not good at it. Those things are going to help you build more confidence and lessen the expectation of perfect performance every single time. So whatever it is that's making you feel like an imposter, at the end of the day, this is about living an authentic life. Just do you, right? Like Oscar Wilde said once, be yourself. Everyone else is, ta <laughs> is taken. So work on pulling off that mask, live into your full potential because there's something special and unique that you bring to this world that no one else can bring. If you mask that part of you, you're losing out on your greatest potential. So the good news is we weren't born with these masks. We put them on so we can take them right back off. So here's what I want you guys to do that have joined me live. And if you're catching this on the replay, you can go through this exercise too. I want you to ask yourself a few questions. What negative message am I holding on to? And how true is that message? It's probably not true at all, is it? So why do you carry that message? If you put that message down, tuck it away, what do you think might happen? Probably the biggest risk is that the world is going to react to seeing the real you. But don't let that scare you into putting the mask back on. Don't put the mask back on your face to hide your insecurities. Here, I want you to hold on to this saying by E.E. E. Cummings who wrote, The greatest battle we face is the battle to protect our true selves from the self the world wants us to become. I love that. Hold on to that say it again, think into it. That, my friends, is going to be it for this version of the Weekly Roar as the sun sets on Bella Roma. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you for joining me live. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, a fantastic weekend. I'm gonna meet you back here, not in Rome. We'll be back in Vicenza. Um, but I will be back here live next Wednesday at the same time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until we meet again, my friends, be powerful, but stay poised just like a lion. Ciao. Thanks for watching the Weekly Roar live event at lionenterprise.com. If you enjoyed this video, please tell others to join us each week here in the Lion's Den.